Um, I'm Ruth Cruikshank and I'm a reader in French and Comparative Literature and Culture and I teach across many of the courses in the Department of Languages, Literatures and Cultures at Royal Holloway. Um, and I'm a specialist in contemporary fiction and thought. I do a bit of film and art as well. And my particular interests are in food, in life in general, but also the critical potential of food as it's represented in novels, as it's represented in films, as it's represented in art. So I'm really excited to talk about the novel Kif Kif de Main. And I'm kind of wishing that last millennium, when I did my French A-level, that there'd been this kind of novel on the syllabus. It's so exciting that we've got a novel uh, that's the kind of thing that a French uh, person doing their baccalauréat might choose to read and might see themselves reflected in or the issues of the world that they live in reflected in and using the kind of language and dealing with the kind of issues which are part of life in France today. Uh, you know, it's a first-person narrative, so that's a fantastic way of identifying with the narrator. And what the narrator brings us, it's a novel, again, that's written by somebody who's of the age of the people who's reading it, are, are some of those issues that any young person might identify with in terms of friendship groups, parents, um, relationships in school what they might be able to or not be able to do in the world of work. And then there are these other extraordinary layers, the most important layers, which are about gender, about race, about class, socioeconomic opportunities. So a huge nexus of issues which are really important to the people who are reading uh, the novel, as well as important to uh, getting a really good understanding of what contemporary life in France might be like for certain people. So in some ways it's a novel about growing up and there's a fancy um, literary term for that, uh, roman d'apprentissage uh, in French. So it's, to some ways, it's a, in some ways it's a novel about, about growing up. Um, it's also a novel about finding one's way in the world and it's particularly a novel about finding one's way in the world through language and opportunities to use language and opportunities to use cultural resources as well. Um, and the language in this novel is one of its most exciting elements. It's not a novel that's written in what you might expect to be literary French. Um, that doesn't mean to say that it isn't a challenging novel because in this novel you experience slang, you experience verlan, which is the uh, reverse slang that's specific to France and you also experience a number of borrowed words particularly from Arabic because the uh, narrator is a young Moroccan woman but these words also um, circulate in, uh, in, in certain registers of contemporary French. Um, so it's a wonderful way reading this book of learning about how a language is a living thing and how languages evolve and how there are different registers in language and different ways of expressing different, um, different issues and different understandings of the world. So that's one thing that's amazing about language in this book. But also we see Doya, the narrator, and her mother um, coming up against different kinds of what we might call linguistic structures or, 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 or discourses at school. Um, in the workplace where Doria's mother is, uh, is a cleaner, in the, those structures which put certain people in power with language, the people with the words, and other people who don't have the language of power in a different place. And we see this mirrored as well in the geography of the novel, of, of, of who's able to travel where. Doria and her mother um, live in the banlieue, in the Saint-Denis, in Pantin, which is one of the most um, uh, socioeconomically um, deprived areas of the uh, of, of the uh, of the Paris region, um, but they uh, and so they're 20 minutes out of the centre of Paris. But Doria's mother's never seen the Eiffel Tower, so this is a really really powerful image of how people, how, how geography and how socioeconomics and race might affect the way that you're able to negotiate the world. And Kif Kif de Mar as well, it does so many different things, is also a novel about writing a novel. One of the things that happens in Kif Kif de Mar is that the protagonist, Doria, this young woman, who 
Initially is someone who's struggling at school. Initially is someone whose only horizon is to go and be a hairdresser, if she's lucky. Who initially is not doing well at school and initially does not value um, the things that she's being taught at school and she's being horribly treated at school. Um, she goes on to write the narrative, to write this novel. Um, so, the, so, the, so the novel itself asks this question about what can writing do, what can literature do? I think that's a really, really interesting question. I also think it's a really problematic question and I think one of the things that the novel enables us to do is to question what a novel might think it's doing. So at the end of the novel, um, there's a quite swift accommodation with the problems that have been so brilliantly laid out in front of us before, the problems of um, socioeconomic uh, precariousness as they intersect with race and gender and one-parent families and a whole mix of things which are in this crucible of the bonu at, at, at Pantin as seen through the eyes of, of, of Doria. Um, and then, as people who've read the novel will know, um, she comes to a kind of accommodation and, 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 and takes on the help of the state, of the social worker, and dreams of being the president of France. And there's, a, there's, there's, there's an accommodation with France's Republican values at the end of the novel, just as her mother gains the ability to speak fluently and read in French. Um, and, and given how brilliant this novel is at demonstrating some of these problems, which are really difficult, uh, intractable problems, which have evaded um, governmental um, influence and intervention, um, and indeed in, in, in the UK as well. To me, that end is a little bit too much of a happy ending. Um, and so also, I think this novel enables us to unleash our literary critics and realise that what an author might intend to do may not be um, a way, th the best way or, or, or the most effective way of reflecting the world um, around them. So we've got a protagonist, a narrator, who is um, the daughter of uh, a single parent. Her father has gone back to Morocco in order to get himself uh, a son. Um, and Doya and her mother are struggling and look as though they are um, destined to do uh, subaltern domestic kind of jobs. So in the first half of the novel, we see the failings of school. We see some of the failings through Doria's eyes of social services. Um, we see the failings of the benefit system. Um, and we see the general unfairness of um, what's happening in different parts of Paris. Um, and although the conclusion of the novel appears to bring back the ideas of la République française, Republican France, back into the frame in a redemptive way. I think one of the really great ways of looking at this novel as we use our literary critical skills and link them back to um, a knowledge of contemporary France is to take the ideals of the French Republic and see how this novel actually lives up to them. So if we think about the, the famous slogan, the famous devise of liberté, égalité, fraternité, um, and the idea of la république une et indivisible, um, to what extent do we have freedom, the already problematic brotherhood and uh, equality, I've gotten the wrong way around there, and, 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 and the one and indivisible Republic. Everybody's the same under the eye of the law. Everybody is meant to have the same access to a non-religious, the same non-religious school education um, scenario. To what extent do we see this? To what extent is Doria free? To what extent are Doria and her mother free? They don't have the money to travel. They don't have the money to buy clothes. 
Um, there's a scene in which we see the evidence of Doria's period poverty. Um, uh, the, the, the freedom is, is not evident. Some French citizens apparently are more free than others and it would appear to be those who are Francais de Souche, those who have been born uh, and, and, and come from long-standing French families and those who are socioeconomically empowered. And, and so, so freedom and equality there, big questions there. Uh, equality also at school in terms of the opportunities for the Muslim students during Ramadan being forced into the dining hall, so real issues going on here, and in terms of the question of fraternity, brotherhood or fellowship or uh, uh, amongst all French citizens. Well, there's a lot of disadvantage shown up in this book of being a woman. Um, there's a lot of gendered um, experiences um, which, are, which, which, are, which are brought to the fore here. So I think all of those things make us question this idea of a redemptive Republican ending to the novel.